All right, guys, today I have a very special episode. I'm gonna be reacting to Demi Lovato's brand new trailer. So a couple weeks ago, um, I was watching YouTube and I saw that she has a new YouTube series coming out and she released the trailer called Dancing with the Devil. And there is some information in there about her vision loss from a couple of years ago when she had her overdose. And so in today's video, we're gonna watch a little bit of her trailer and I'm gonna tell you all about her vision loss, what might have happened. So stay tuned for that in today's video. Welcome to Salisbury Eye Care and Eyewear. I'm Dr. D. My goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Before we roll the actual footage, I'm gonna give you just a little bit of background. So if you're not familiar, if you've been living under a rock, um, Demi Lovato, two years ago, so she'd been sober for six years, and then um, two years ago, she overdosed, so in 2018. And um, our clip is gonna pick up where her friend is kind of talking about right after she had overdosed, and they're gonna talk a little bit about what happened in the overdose and the results on her vision. So let's pick that up there and then we'll talk about it. I had three strokes. I had a heart attack. My doctors said that I had five to 10 more minutes. All right, that's good. She was like, I can't, I can't see, I can't see anything. Okay, so basically in that clip, you see that her friend talks about right after the overdose and right after her strokes, she said, I just can't see anything. And then you see Demi come back on the screen and say, yeah, so I had three strokes and a heart attack. So while Demi was promoting this trailer coming out, she was on a TV film critics panel. And at the panel, she was quoted as saying, I don't drive a car because I have blind spots in my vision. She also said, also for a long time, had a really hard time reading. It was a big deal when I was able to read out of a book, which was like two months later, because my vision was so blurry. So first of all, let's talk about recreational drugs and strokes. Number one, I have no idea the drugs that she was taking. I am like super naive on drugs to begin with. I really don't know. Um, but that being said, recreational drugs are actually... Um, fairly commonly a cause of strokes in younger folks. When I was in my residency, I actually had a patient who um, was a heavy cocaine user that had a stroke just kind of out of nowhere with no other pre-existing condition. So not only have I seen this in my actual patients, but it's a kind of a known thing that it, it is possible for recreational drugs of different kinds to cause strokes. Drugs can cause a stroke by one of two sort of mechanisms. And let me just say, first of all, that I'm an eye doctor, not a brain doctor, not a neurologist, and so don't take this as the final word on strokes. But my understanding is that drugs are either gonna cause direct damage to blood vessels or they're gonna cause issues with the heart and other organs, impairing their function, and then that results in a stroke. Okay, so a stroke happens when blood vessels in the, in the brain called arteries are either blocked or they burst. Now, strokes can cause vision problems, and this is my area of expertise. So we're gonna talk through this a little bit more. I'll need that in a moment. <laughs> my notes. Okay, so visual field defects, it just depends on where the insult is in the visual pathway. So this lovely drawing here that I did shows a right eye and a left eye, and then the pathway that the nerves take on their way into the visual system. So on the right eye right here, you have temporal nerve fibers and you have nasal nerve fibers. So I made the temporal red and the nasal yellow. The nose is right there. I'm not a nose artist. <laughs> All right, so there's your temporal and there's your nasal. And they come on back and then there's a splitting that happens. So na nasal fibers cross at the optic chiasm. Then you have another division that occurs at the, la the um, LGN. And then you have fibers that sort of come back here into the calcarine fissure. This is like super confusing, but basically what you need to know is that your eyes are connected to your brain and there's a visual pathway. And if something happens in the brain, where it happens is gonna determine the type of visual field defect that occurs. And so for instance, I have sort of associated here, if something happens in the retina itself, this is meant to be at the optic nerve, 
insertion point, you're going to have a central scotoma or an enlarged blind spot. If something happens right here before the fibers cross, you're going to have monocular vision loss. So something happens to this nerve, that eye alone is affected. Once you start getting further back into the visual pathway, you're going to have involvement of both eyes. So right here at the chiasm is a very, very classic visual field loss called a bitemporal hemianopsia. That occurs usually with pituitary tumors, um, pituitary gland issues there because you have the pituitary gland located in that same area. Going back further, this is where a lot of strokes happen. So I would say most of my patients who have had occipital lobe strokes, strokes in their brain, you'll see one of these defects down here. Depending on the location, you're either going to have a contralateral homonymous hemianopsia. So all that means, those are big words, but it means both sides, it's the, it's the same side on both sides because you're at a point where the fibers have already crossed. And so you've got nasal on this side, temporal on this side. So that's going to be temporal nasal. So same side. It gets confusing, but if you follow the nerves, that's what's happening. And so depending on the side of the brain, if it happens on the right side of the brain, you'll see left, you'll have a left-sided loss. If it happens on left side, you'll have a right-sided loss. So that shows you right here. You can also have a quadrant, quadrant anopia. So just a quadrant of your vision is gone. She had three strokes. We have no idea where they occurred, but it is likely if she can't drive that they happened um, somewhere back here, causing half of her visual field to be gone. So I can't really know where her strokes occurred, but we can speculate based on her words. And because she can't drive a car, it really makes me think that she has some loss to the same side, either bilateral right-sided loss or bilateral left-sided loss. So the, the reason visual field matters for driving a car is because if you have left-sided loss to both sides, you can imagine it would be really hard to see oncoming traffic. You have a big visual field deficit there. All right, so let's talk a little bit about why her visual field defect, which we're just speculating on, might have made it um, impossible for her to operate a car. Well, each state, North Carolina, where I'm from, California, where I understand Demi lives, um, have different driving standards, and the DMV puts these standards out to the public. Um, California's driving standards are very similar to what I'm used to in North Carolina. You must be able to see 20, or 40, 20, 40 or better in one eye, and you must have um, enough visual field. The amount of visual field by degrees isn't published anywhere. I took a look at California's DMV website and I did find these specs. Um, they have their form on their website. So Demi, if she had vision loss, would have to have her eye doctor fill out one of these forms saying exactly how much visual field she has. And then the DMV makes a determination if that's safe enough to drive. But you can imagine if you have a stroke back here in the brain and you have bilateral right-sided loss or left-sided loss, that's going to make turning really difficult, seeing oncoming traffic difficult because you are deficient in your periphery on one side. Specifically on the California forms, there are a couple of areas that we'll put right here where it shows visual fields. And if there is a quadrantinopia or a hemianopia, which are the two types of field defects I just mentioned, there's a spot where as the eye doctor, you have to check that off. So to me, it's not very surprising that after having three strokes, she is probably not able to legally drive a car if she has resulting field loss. Okay, so the second thing Demi talks about is having a lot of difficulty reading because her vision was so blurry and that that vision took almost two months to come back and it was such a big deal to her when she could read a book again. 
So we're going to talk a little bit about that because blurriness is such a common term. Just about everybody I see will describe their vision as blurry, but blurry has so many meanings. And when you start thinking about someone who's had an actual stroke, that blurriness could have been many different things for her. So the first thing that could have occurred with her vision is she might have had a little bit of diplopia. In a stroke, it's very possible to have diplopia or double vision. Um, in double vision, you have images that are skewed. They can either be totally separate from each other, next to each other, on top of each other, or even sort of catty corner. But that would make it really uncomfortable and really hard to read and could be interpreted as being blurry. The next thing that can happen, some stroke victims have visual auras after their stroke. So just kind of constantly seeing lights or halos in their vision that aren't there. And this is just a result of, you know, the, the brain having an insult or injury and sort of sending off this signal that isn't truly in the person's vision. Again, if she were experiencing that, super distracting, makes it really difficult to read. The third thing is a homonymous hemianopia. You guys know about that. We just talked about it. So if she truly has a you know left-sided defect or a right-sided defect, that makes it so difficult to read. Imagine how hard it would be to track lines in a book if you're missing the whole left side of your vision. Once you find your words, you're okay to read to the right, but as you try to come back to that next line, you would lose it all the time because you're trying to find the beginning of that next line, but you have a blind spot there. The same thing with if she had a right-sided defect. So you can find the line to start, but it's hard to see kind of the end of that line. So again, that visual field defect that may be preventing her from driving could also affect her reading. The next thing is some folks have visual hallucinations after a stroke. Again, we're talking about something that happens to the brain. And so it's very possible to see things in your vision that aren't truly there. Ocelopsia. Following a stroke, it's not uncommon to have ocelopsia, meaning images that jump and move or even rotate a little bit. So that could also be interpreted as blur and just really make it uncomfortable and difficult to read. In a super rare case, it's possible also to have cortical blindness. Now, I'm guessing she doesn't have cortical blindness because she is able to read a book. Cortical blindness occurs when you have strokes in the occipital lobe, both sides, and you would lose both sides of your vision. From what she's saying, even though she had three strokes, it sounds like, thank goodness, they were not on opposing sides of the brain hopefully didn't cause a cortical blindness situation where she isn't able to see anything. All right, so that's strokes in a nutshell, kind of talking about the visual impact of strokes and so just speculating, of course, about what might have happened to Dummy. Ultimately, I am just so glad to see Demi Lovato kind of back. I cannot wait to watch her um, series on YouTube. So we'll definitely um, link that in our description and you guys can check that out too. It's always good to see somebody come back. I love a good comeback story, a good underdog story. I know she's faced a lot in her life and it's just great to see her doing well. Thanks as always for tuning in. We love having you here. I hope you enjoyed this very special episode of iDoctor Reacts. Join us every single week on Saturdays for more videos like this, and I will see you next time.